tell the story of how your son got connected with Sudbury. Like, how did that happen? Well, I tell this story at the very beginning of my book, Free to Learn, so I won't spoil that by giving all the <laughs> details for people who have yet to read that book. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> but to make a, a, um, a somewhat short story even shorter, uh, my son was rebelling in the public school that we were sending him to, the supposed to be a very fine suburban public school. Mm -hmm. He hated it from kindergarten mm -hmm. on through fifth grade, which is the last grade he attended there, and resisted it all the way, fought with the mm -hmm. teachers, and made a real pain of himself in school, called it prison. Mm -hmm. I was sending him off to prison every day when I forced him to go to school. You know, he still has bad memories of it. Mm. many years later, and I have regrets for the fact mm. that it took me a long time to begin to hear him. But uh, finally, it reached a crisis point um, at which, um, the, I'm trying to remember, was the end of fourth grade or the end of fifth grade. I, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm not, po I think he was, at any rate, he was nine years old. Mm -hmm. And it reached the point where it was very clear that the school didn't want him there. <laughs> mm. He didn't want to be there. We had to find something different. And, and we found this remarkable alternative school called the Sudbury Valley School, which is only a couple of miles where, from where we lived. At that time, mm. that was regarded as pretty easy walking distance for a nine-year-old. Mm. Uh, today, uh, people wouldn't think that way. <laughs> but... <laughs> But it was a place he could walk to school or bicycle to this school, and he loved it. It was, uh, uh, and it was, uh, it was a change from night to day. He was suddenly his uh, beaming, happy self was there. The twinkle in his eyes, the the intellectual curiosity about things that had almost totally been destroyed, uh, at mm -hmm. least submerged mm -hmm. during those awful years. And I say awful. I don't want to say that public school is awful for everybody, but it is right, awful right. for some. Mm -hmm. And it was awful for him. It was essentially torture for him. He's just not somebody who is willing to do something just because he's told to do it. Mm -hmm. He has to have a reason. He has to believe there's some some benefit to what he's doing. Right, right. And, and that just doesn't fly in any public school or any typical school. It doesn't fly. You've got to do what you're told to do. If it, The way the schools are set up, you couldn't possibly handle people like my son because mm -hmm. you can't, you, with 30 kids in a the class, there's no way you can treat everybody as a person. Mm -hmm. There's things you can do a little bit in that direction, but when you've got a curriculum to teach and everybody's supposed to learn the same curriculum, no matter whether they're interested or not, no matter what their personality is like, no matter what uh, what their predilections are or their style of learning is, no matter any of that stuff, they've all got to learn it. You've got to teach it to them all at the same time. The only way you can do it is basically with a military style of saying, mm -hmm. you know, this is not the place to question what you're doing. You just do it. Mm -hmm. And that's the message, essentially, in every typical school, regardless mm -hmm. of how enlightened the teachers are. The teachers come in right. enlightened. The teachers are good people. But they're in a setting in which the only way you can operate is essentially by force. And some kids simply are unwilling to accept that. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.